Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about Synology disk station and the current model I'm using is a DS216 Play quick installation guide. And the Synology is generally looks like this. This is the front view of the DS disk station 216 Play model. Okay, and this is a side view and inside we have a multiple hard drives and this is the back view or rear view. We have a LAN port, power cord and USBs. Okay, so here is the quick agenda. Synology disk station, uh, one example I'm taking is a disk station 216 play model and package contents and what are all the connections and buttons available and how we can install the drives and start up. And once we start up the Synology Disk Station and how to install your Disk Station Manager in short form DSM on Synology Disk Station. And finally, I will show you the Synology NAS Home Lab. Once we are familiar with the DS216 Play model, it's almost similar to the other models. Okay, so let's start with the first point, package contents. So Synology Disk Station, DS216 play package contents. Generally, once we have this model uh, within our home lab, this is a DS216 play, how it is looks like. And we have a one AC power card and also power adapter. And also we have RJ45 LAN cable. And we have a, some screws for the Synology case. And also a few screws specifically for a hard drives. Okay, this is the package contents. And another point, Synology disk station connections and buttons. So here, what is the connections available in the front, front view and also the rear view? From the front view, if you see the first one status, that means it's a status indicator and second one is a LAN indicator and third one is a disk indicator. Currently in this diagram, it is showing as green color means health status is normal. In case of any health issues or connectivity issues, the color will be changed to either yellow or red color. Yellow means it is a warning and red color means it's alert. Okay, and fourth option is power button. So this is a power button with power on and off. Okay, and the fifth one is fan. Okay, for the cooling system. And the sixth one is LAN port. It will support for your RJ45. And the seventh one is, one is USB 2.0 and the blue one is a USB 3.0, latest version of USB port. And eighth one is reset button. In case if you want to reset our entire storage system, we can use reset option, okay. And ninth one can stun security slot. This is to lock our device, okay. And the 10th one is the power port to power on this Synology disk station, okay. And now another point is, Synology disk station hardware setup, how we can install the drives. If you see here, there is a upper case, I push the upper case in the direction as shown here. Okay, so lift the upper case and set it aside. That is the first step. And second step, we have to install the drives inside this Synology disk station. So this disk drives are generally, we have a two types of sizes, either 3.5 inches disk drive or 2.5 inches disk drive. But most commonly it's supported for a 3.5 inch disk drive. So for this one, we can slide the drive into the hard drive, hard drive bay. This is the bay actually. So hard drive bay, and we can also push it all the way to the, all the way until the, it formally connected to the, our disk drive connector. Okay, this is the way we can connect. And also once it is connected, we have to do the drive with the screws are provided. We have to screw it for a specific hard drive. Okay, and this is a 3.5 inch hard drive and it is directly supported for Synology disk station. But some scenarios, if you plan to use a small hard drive, which is the 2.5 inches drives, for this 2.5 inches drive scenario, there will be an additional disk holder. So we have to connect our 2.5 inch drive along with the disk holder. Then only we can able to insert into this bay. Okay, and Currently we have a one drive inserted here and the next we can also insert a second drive as well. That means we have to repeat the above step to install the other drive if we have prepared a another one, 
okay so the position of drives are it looks like this the top one is the one first drive and below one is the second drive once the, the connections the second drive also connected exactly to the drive connector and if you want to uh, we can plan to close the a, a, appropriate uh, finally we can replace the upper case and tighten the screws on the back panel same like how we open reverse way we can just insert and we can tighten the screws in the back panel okay that's how we can install the drives but some scenarios if we plan to configure here right on this disk drives currently we have a two drives drive one and drive two if you want to configure a ride like a ride zero or ride one generally we recommend to configure ride one for mirroring that means whatever the data copied on ride disk one it will be mirrored to the second disk but only recommendation from this analogy is when we plan to configure a ride volume it's uh, recommended to maintain the two drive size should be same size let's say the first drive size is three terabyte even second drive also must maintain a equivalent size three terabyte that is only recommendation when plan to configure a ride okay Suppose if you don't want to use a ride, you can just start using the complete data. Okay, so that is how we can install the drives. And now let's talk about the startup option. Startup option is simple. We all just know we understand how the device looks like, how we can place the drives inside the Synology. So it includes the three steps mainly. The first step is just we can connect to the power cable to the power socket. And the second one, we can use the LAN cable to connect the disk station to our internal switch. Okay, our local home lab switch. And the third step is just power on the power on the power button so that uh, it will turn on the Synology disk station. So these are the three steps involved to start up the Synology disk station. Once the Synology disk station is turned on, we have to do, as per the Synology recommendation, quick start guide, we have to install the disk station manager. In, start form, in, in short form, we call it as DSM. So DSM on Synology disk station. DSM is nothing but a Synology's browser based operating system on our disk station okay so it will there will be a web assistant it will help us to install the dsm so how we can do this option sir these are the high level steps power on the disk station we know the power button is here we can turn on and open the browser so within our home lab we can just open a browser and that specifically computer connected to the same network as the disk station okay and either the we can use any of the following address bar of our browser we, the, we um, synology providing two two options option one you can type the url find.synology.com that is one method and second method disk station colon port number is 5000 when you type any one of the url it will launch the web assistant home page once the web assistant will be launched in our web browser it will search for a find the disk station within our local network. So finally, we have to do click the connect to start the setup process and follow the on-screen instruction. But when we click on connect to install the disk station manager, generally it will take around 10 minutes time. So, and also it depends on our internet speed as well because it will download the binaries from the internet. So with interest of our time, I already downloaded the DSM disk station manager in our home lab and I install the DSM within my lab Synology disk station NAS. So let's quickly connect to the disk station. Either we can use disk station colon 5000 or we can also have a separate URL. Once the setup is completed, it will provide us one URL, https quickconnect.to slash and our user ID. Currently, I configured the username as a Gnan Cloud Garage, our channel name. So you can use either this URL or you can try to connect from any one option, either find.synology.com or disk station colon 5000. Any one option, definitely it will work. Okay, so let me connect to our lab system first. So I'm trying to type the disk station first, HTTPS, and the given URL is colon slash slash find dot synology dot com. So when we type find synology dot com, maybe we have to try only the this one. So instead of hyphen, we can use dot. 
okay it's trying to searching for a synology devices so currently it says that no disk station found within the lan when it is not found we can try with a second url so second url is https colon slash slash and we have to type disk station colon 5000 Just in case if this URL also not working, we can try with the third URL. So as per the Synology quick start guide, we can try with any one URL. Definitely it will work within our home lab network. Okay, seems it is also taking time. So let me try the third URL. So HTTPS colon slash slash. The URL is quickconnect.to and our username, non cloud garage. So let me press enter. So now it is trying to connect. So it's already connected to our lab NAS storage. So GCG, our NAS storage server name, I just make it as a GCG hyphen NAS hyphen zero one. And even if you see, it's automatically detect the port number as 501, okay, instead of 5000. And now the username, let me type the username as a GNAN Cloud Garage. So when we type GNAN Cloud Garage, this is our sign in and now click on connect and we have to enter the password. So now click on sign in. So it is allow us to log into our web-based Synology disk station URL. So this is, a, this is the web-based URL. It's talk about disk station manager console, okay? So disk station manager console in the right side corner, you can see system health is healthy. And this is the server name and our LAN network uptime is just one minute, 46 seconds. And it is also saying that uh, one hour 46, sorry. And the resource monitor CPU is 2%, memory is 26% and use is currently normal usage. And we can see in the left side, DSM help, file station, control plane and package center. We'll verify the file station. See the file station, it says there is no shared folders created at present. We can create the shared folders later. Okay. And even if you, it is saying that please go to storage manager to create a storage pool. So we have to go to the storage manager is the recommended option. So it is already mapped to the storage manager. Even the storage manager, if you didn't find also, I will show you the navigation option. Just close here close here close here in the top whatever the icon it is showing from main menu from the main menu you can see all these options like control pane file station dsm help package manager resource monitor here you can see the storage manager so it's recommendation to configure the volumes we can use storage manager and universal switch to search our files and folders you can use the search and there is active insight feature lock center and also authentication service security advisor support center also available and san manager even there is a additional features also we can able to configure using this Synology disk station. That means when we see the stand manager, it is also available to configure LAN and iSCSI feature is available. Okay. So currently iSCSI LAN, there is no LAN. No LAN and iSCSI also currently zero. There is no events. But as per the recommendation, first we can configure here. From the storage manager, we can create a volume. So go to the storage manager. And it's saying that start to create a storage pools and volumes. So we are going to create a volume using our disk drives. Currently, whatever the drives we have, we have a two drives within our Synology disk station. Using those two drives, we can configure one raw volume. Okay. So now just click on start and it is saying that write type. Okay. The write type, it is showing as default option SHR and uh, there is, if you want to configure RAID one also, we can configure. That means if you have a two drives with equivalent 3TB, 3TB, right? When you configure RAID one, we will get the total size only the three terabyte only because RAID one means it is a mirroring, okay? RAID zero means striping, okay? And J board means just a bunch of disks. So I'm just choosing the first option, SHR, okay? And even they given some recommendation. Minimum number of drives, if you want to configure storage pool, we should have minimally one drive. And for drive fault tolerance, for storage pool compromising, at least two drives is needed when we plan to configure a ride. 
okay and also another recommendation when we configure right both drives sh size should be equal at size okay so now click on next and it is saying that select at least one drive to create a storage pool right type of SSR. So I'm just selecting the two drives. And if you see that both, both drives are same size and each drive size is 2.7 terabyte. Okay, so now click on next. And it is saying that please note that the following regarding select drives contains bad sectors. Okay, it's we recommend to replace the drives containing bad sectors damage or important data will be lost that means it is going to format everything so we are okay and it will also if you want to perform the drive check we can check or else we can seek for, uh, skip the drive check for for the time being so click on next and now it is going to configure the sizes equivalent to total capacity we will get 2.5 terabyte suppose if you want to use it full size instead of shr we have to choose as a basic model. So when we choose basic model, drive fault tolerance is zero. Okay, so when we click on next, click on next, only one drive can be selected. Okay, one drive can be selected within a basic. So that means we can change it to J board, just a bunch of disks. When we select the just a bunch of disk, we'll see how much size we will get. See, we will get the total size approximately 5.4 terabyte. Okay, anyhow, it's a lab system. We will plan to utilize the full size. Click on next, continue, and skip for the drive checking. We'll get approximately 5.5 terabyte. Click on next, and the, we have to enter the value. Let's say we can plan to utilize the full size. So we'll enter, it is in the GBs, so we'll type the full drive. Okay, and volume description, let's say, Volume description we can give it as a GCG hyphen NAS hyphen zero one. Okay, same like server volume name. Same like server name I'm given for a volume description. Click on next. See write type we given as a J board and drive type SATA HDD and we have two drives and two drives equivalent size 2.7 and the file system it selected as ext4 we'll see is there any other file system we can modify. Seems the file system is the default file system. Okay. Okay, now apply, click on okay. Okay, two drives are created, 2.CV, allocation size is normal and health status also healthy. So volume creating is in progress. Okay, now we can see the drive both status is normal and overview you can see here and the system is healthy. Two drives are detected. Okay, and this is how we can configure the drive volumes from the storage manager. Okay, and if you want to see the SAN, SAN manager view, even from the SAN manager view, if you want to configure your LUN or currently there is no LUN, we can configure the LUN as well. And before that, we need to configure a iSCSI target. Same like how we configured a software iSCSI within our ESX. Similarly, we can configure a software iSCSI initiator here. Let's say without CHOP authentication. CHOP means challenge handshake authentication protocol. Without CHOP authentication, we'll just create, create a LUN and we can make it as LUN1. It is utilizing the complete volume. Okay, so capacity, if you want to change, we can change. And we have option to thick and thin provisioning. Okay, so total capacity, let's say we'll make it as a 5522 total size. Okay, this is how we can create a LUN as well. Even LUN1 is created. When you go to the LUN tab, it is creating. So LUN1 also created. And if you want to provide this LUN to add a host to manage 
www.wwn and LUN permission. If you want to add any of our ESXi hosts, we can add so that this LUN will be accessible to those ESXi hosts. Okay. Suppose if you want to add the host, we can add, let's say, our ESXi host one, two, and all multiple ESXi hosts we have in our lab. Those ESXi hosts we can provide a access here. Okay. But hope you understand how we can create a just bunch of disk volume first, and after that go to the menu and we can go to the SAN manager. We can configure as a iSCSI LUN. Okay, so currently we configured a one LUN and with the equivalent size, it's the size is 5.4 terabyte and later we can provide the access to ESX as well. Okay, so that's it. Hope you understand the Synology disk station, how to install disk station manager and also how we can create a volume and how we can create iSCSI software initiator and creating the LUN within our Synology disk station. Currently, uh, all the options from basic, from quick installation, we covered, okay? So thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Ignant Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.